Everdream Valley has had a rough start of mixed reviews, bug reports, and cozy gamers overall not enjoying the game that much i got my hands on a key thank you unfold tales for gifting me one i dug into the game myself for the very first time to see if the game really is as iffy as their reviews say and i do have some opinions to share before we start like and subscribe so you get more of this pretty face on your feet let's begin what is everdream valley everdream valley is a farm animal farm sim exploration game you spend your summer vacation at your grandparents very rundown farm making it your quest to restore it to its former glory this you do by tidying up the farm and the valley itself you find and herd animals into enclosures you build at the farm you restore areas like orchard and flower fields explore the entire valley and all its secrets all while you do the classic of farming and attending your crops and from the very beginning you get your own extremely cute dog to help you sounds like every other generic farm sim game a little bit but what everdream valley does different is they focus on farm animals and mini games let me start off by saying this game has some really nice features i would love to see in more farm sim games overall like when your crops are ready for harvest instead of watching an animation every single time you pick them up you run straight into your crops and collect them that way and the same goes for foraging don't get me wrong i like the cute animation just like everyone else but when you're collecting a mushroom 15 times in a row the bending down and picking up can get quite tedious they also have mini games for everything not to forget the adorable design of the farm animals and the grandparents and something I didn't expect to enjoy as much as I did was the entire task of cleaning, as in picking up rubble and trash and planks, throwing out old dead bushes and trees, restoring fences and overall tidying up this, both the farm and the valley itself. It was a very satisfying feeling. I was not prepared for it but I really liked it. When I got my copy of the game from the devs, I were aware the game was intended for a Nintendo Switch release, which is obvious when you're playing it on PC. The keyboard controls felt very, very unnatural. Like usually we would use the left mouse button to like chop down trees and as an action button, but we had to use the F and the E key instead every time. And regarding the mini games where they explain how to, you know, play the mini game, they used arrow keys to describe how to control the minigame but we're sitting with a keyboard and what they really meant wasn't the arrow keys what they wanted us to use was the WASD and even sometimes they showed Xbox keys like Xbox controller keys even though I'm sitting with keyboard and mouse and I can already hear you asking Camila why didn't you use a controller then I tried but already at the title screen despite Steam showing it is fully controller compatible I couldn't even move in the menu yet alone start the game without having to force stop it and then continue with the mouse. Anywho, I got into the game, we started playing, and what I really think is a shame is they put so much love into the character designs and you can tell they had intention for a cute story if you're really wanting to help your grandparents, but the storytelling and the dialogue between the characters is plain old boring. It's bland. From the get-go, there is only one dialogue box and there's not really any sound effects to underline the tone or what's happening, which in my case, given I may, I do have ADHD, so that may play a role in it, but in, in my case, it quickly became a quest to skip the dialogue as fast as possible in the entire game so I could get to the actual gameplay part. Now, let's talk something the game really nails. their animal design and animal care. It is obvious from the beginning of the game everdream's focus is farm animals and creators roaming the valley they're making them all super cute super fluffy and some of them even a little bit silly looking and they made sure you can pet every single one of the animals you encounter even the npc's animals and the wild ones you can't tame so which animals can we actually have at our farm we have the classics of, you know, a cow, a chicken, sheep, a cat is even roaming the grandparents already got. And there's even critters like deer and beavers that I'm unsure can become more than critters you can pet. But they also added hella cute alpacas, which you can find in the valley and herd back to your farm. Which, by the way, is a non-monetized way for you to collect the firsts of I'm not gonna say all because I'm not sure, but a lot of the classic farm animals. And you can even use your dog 
to help herd animals back to your farm, which is really nice when you encounter like a patch of sheep. Bit difficult to do by yourself, but with a dog, it becomes a bit easier. But beware, the herding system again may be more natural for the Nintendo Switch compared to a keyboard. It's a bit clunky, a little difficult to maneuver, especially with the camera angle. And for everything except the sheep, I ended up cheating a little bit, simply running up to the animals, pet them, make as many as possible, follow me, and then grab one of them in my hand and schedule home with them. A little cheat code, but it worked, because I did not do well with the herding. As I was herding and, you know, collecting critters like butterflies and beetles, even catching frogs, what I realizing caught a mouse and i wanted to release the little guy because i have i have no use for a mouse i don't know what to do with him so when i got to the backpack to hold it and release it you're actually with the character standing in the field with the mouse in your hand it is so cute you just stand there holding this little guy as a trophy <laughs> so back on track farm animals their use and overall farming and monetization you got crops you got farm animals you want their produce makes sense Enter the other focus Everdream Valley got, mini games. You want milk from your cow to sell or use in cooking, which by the way is also a mini game. You gotta milk it, like a real farmer. Same for alpacas and sheep. You would like their fur, you gotta shear them, cut them, whatever it may be the word. You have wood, you need it for a fence or a piece of furniture. You better start carpeting and cutting it out properly for you to get planks. Did I love the mini games at first? Oh God, yes. Did I also get annoyed eventually? Yes. <laughs> when you have eight sheep, you need to give a cut. Instead of having the quick action to simply shear them like snip snip outside of the game, you had to enter the mini game, choose quick complete, and then load out of the mini game. Which after eight tries became quite an annoying task, making me not even want to give them a cut. Now, you also get more unique mini games where you actually control animals. Like at night, you become your dog to guard the farm animals from wild wolves. I will not spoil the fun and tell you how to get these mini games, but I can share you will befriend a very common farm friend in order for this to happen. Let's start farming. This is after all a farming game. <laughs> it works like always. Plow, seeds, water, harvest, the classic. What I really like in Everdream Valley is that your grandparents actually play a role in farming and they're not just NPCs without an actual purpose besides the story. Every single morning, the grandparents will have collected the previous day's foliage or crops or whatever they may find, which you can get from them simply by conversing with your grandparent or your grandpa every single morning, which is a really good help, especially at the beginning of the game to give you some quick cash, quick monetization as you're getting the basics down. I think overall the farming works really well it's very neat it works it's a great bonus the grandparents actually help out and like i mentioned before it's really nice that you can collect your harvest simply by running into it it's a good feature what they could have paid a little bit more attention to is the process of using the watering can and refilling it first off when watering the crops you only have to go whoop and then you're done which can be nice less time consuming but then again it makes it feel like you're honestly not doing the task at all what i think i speak for many by saying is the sound they use for refilling the watering can needs to change it sounds like someone is standing up and peeing into a toilet i get wanting to make unique sounds for your game but in this case purchase a sound effect pack for a game design website and use that something i haven't encountered in other farming games is berries apples Anything growing on trees and bushes can be harvested more than once a day. And it's a nice, easy way to earn some coin in the beginning of the game, which also gives you the, the desire to actually design an orchard. Same when you explore and find new areas. Sometimes you may find old flower patches with seeds scattered around. You can take and spread with a little help of the wind in whatever pattern you would like. Again, it's a very nice little feature adding to the game's aesthetic that is not needed but super cute to have. I do have to mention, when you want your hard-earned coin from your crops, your harvest, your produce from your farm animals, you go to the merchant to sell them. You have to be patient. The merchant has no categories, no system, making it very confusing to sell and especially purchase from him. And when you start selling stuff to him, that inventory grows. 
And when we're on the topic of a technical aspect, not having to scroll out like mayhem every single time you open the map would be very nice. Again, it may be a, a little thing, but when you keep finding these little technical aspects throughout the game, it, it adds up. Same for when you get a new quest. It's very nice they decided for it to pop up on screen for you to realize, oh, I got a new quest. But the problem is it's one, a big image, two, it stays there and three if you like me don't want too much clutter on your screen because you get distracted you have to remove it every single time and when you complete and get new quests all the time in the game it becomes really annoying so everdream valley if you're looking for a simple cozy experience with love for care of farm animals and mini games and very important feature of pitting all animals everdream valley may be a neat game for you as it fulfills the basics of a cozy farm sim game with a few unique twists but you do have to come to term with everdream valley's lack in storytelling structure and technical aspects some of which may be solvable in a patch or two personally i feel this game is more at the stage of an early access rather than a full release game i absolutely had my aww moments in the game no doubt there but the game simply has too many small hiccups altogether gives me no drive to return to the game and play for more than the few hours that i did am i being too harsh maybe is this simply not a game for me probably let me know if you think i'm too harsh or if you agree with my opinions or even have something to add that i oversaw or missed or yeah confused you get the point like subscribe i'll see you guys next time